Hello, my name is Simon Constable and I'm an equine vet. This is a video to talk about foaling and, and things that you can do to prepare yourself. I thought it was quite important there aren't really many videos around to demonstrate what happens at foaling and, and more importantly the preparation and, and the ways that you can um, get everything ready to make sure that the foaling goes as smoothly as possible. So we start off obviously almost 12 months ago, 335 to 340 days is the normal gestation period of a horse. So we have a good idea of the due date and that means that um, you can then predict when it's going to happen and, and more importantly then you can look a few weeks in advance and often maybe a month, six weeks in advance to make sure that you can prepare yourself for the foaling and, and that means getting the mare into the environment in which she's going to foal. That's very important from the point of view of antibodies that she's going to uh, make against the, the different bugs in the environment and that may be different depending on where she, she does that. Also it gives you a chance to observe her and see what happens with a, a, a normal behaviour. Look at the, the other development which commonly will happen about or will start to happen at about a month to six weeks before and that usually in, in, uh, includes an enlargement of the udder. Obviously if, if she's a maiden mare she will have very little udder previously if she's had several foals, you may find that she's already got quite a large udder, but you, you certainly notice a change in shape. Also at that time, it's a, an important thing to, to make sure your horse is vaccinated. This allows the mare to pass the immunity onto the foal in the first, the first milk, or the colostrum as it's called. Normally we would vaccinate, obviously you've probably done your equine herpes virus vaccinations previously to make sure that that your mare doesn't abort um, and then normally done at, at five, seven and nine months of gestation but as we say about a month, six weeks before it's often a good idea to boost them against flu and tetanus and, and that will allow as I said the, the mare to pass the, the immunity on. So in, in the intervening four to six weeks then before the due date you need to take quite a, quite a lot of care with your, your mare looking at seeing what's happened Obviously she needs to go out in the field and, and be treated as normal, although that, that can be quite difficult in the winter months and you may be limited to maybe a few hours a day just to, to get her out, get a stretch in her legs, stop anything like, like a ventral edema that sometimes happened um, and also to, to again make sure that she's, she's moving about, she's not stiffening up, she has no problems passing droppings and, and that type of thing. So as we get closer to foaling, as we say, the, the udder will enlarge, you'll see the development of that. And then generally, a few weeks before, you need to be preparing yourself that, that maybe your mare is going to fall, and that involves putting her onto st a straw bedding. And the reason for that is that the foal really when it's born into shavings will the, the shavings get up the nose obviously the foal's inquisitive will maybe start to eat the bedding and shavings are not a good uh, a good uh, bedding for that to happen straw isn't a problem it obviously can be digested certainly eventually anyway so straw is a very good idea uh, as a bedding it's something I would recommend um, even if your horse isn't normally on it and then as we get closer to foaling this is when it gets more critical in, in being observant. Setting up things like a closed circuit TV is, is very, very important. And that, from, from the, a mare's point of view, being disturbed all the time, which would involve um, uh, people getting up in the middle of the night and walking down to the stable and looking in without CCTV, um, every time you do that, the mare may be disturbed and, and it may just delay the foaling a little bit. But obviously with a, a closed circuit TV camera, you can see them all the time and, and you don't have to disturb them. And because mares, they do have this ability to fine tune when they're foaling, uh, commonly they will they will be, as, as we say, the gestation period 335 to 340 days, but there, there is quite a lot of variance on that, and it can be as little as 325, can be as long as 365, and there is a, an idea that uh, the foal often determines the time, as in the, the date, um, whereas the, the mare will determine what hour or, or the, the time of, of the actual foaling. So, the more you disturb them, the less likely she is to fall. She would prefer to fall at a quiet time. Now that can be during the day, certainly yards where people are at work and there's maybe very little going on, she may fall during the day. If it's a very noisy yard or a, a, a normal yard, and she will often fall in the middle of the night and that, that, that can be at any time. But again, you know, being observant and looking out for that just in case she needs a hand is very, very important. So getting down to the last few days, what do we look for? Well, 
the main thing is waxing up on the teats that's that's a, a, a obviously a waxy substance that, that can be a sort of a yellowy uh, white appearance just on the ends of the teats and can get quite large even even the size of a, a small grape sometimes and that is a generally a very good sign that falling is imminent and when we're talking 24 to 48 hours but it can be a lot longer um, it can be several days sometimes and, and it it's you know but again it's another important thing to watch out for the other thing is around the back end where the mare's uh, tail head and, and the muscles around there the ligaments tend to relax and it becomes a lot more softer a lot more blamongy um, which you know can be prodded and, and it, it gives quite a lot more and again that's a very very good sign of, of impending uh, falling and, and again you need to be on red alert at that time so this mare has actually already foaled uh, thankfully she foaled about nine days ago and we've got a nice colt but um, she actually foaled quite a, an unusual hour I would say it was at 7 30 at night uh, we just finished the yard and we, we had a bit of an idea a behavior change she'd, she'd stopped eating a little bit she was very picky she was very restless she was, uh, turning round a lot, she was kicking at the stomach occasionally, obviously all signs of colic that you would expect but is something that you know, perhaps could be, um, could be interpreted in several ways but we watched her very closely on the CCTV and we saw her get down, she started to push and, and we were there straight away to give her a hand. So the following video, thankfully we managed to catch this on video, um, the following video will show you exactly what happened. So this is first stage labour, this is quite an exciting part, quite a stressful part because you're worried about what's going to happen next and normally stage one of labour uh, it will last anywhere between 30 minutes and about four hours and at this point I'm just feeling inside to make sure that the fold is coming out properly that really is both front feet um, with the nose in between ideally with the head up towards the tail and the two front feet down towards the the, hot, the, the mare's hocks, a really really important part of it because if that isn't coming out properly you need to know as soon as possible. So the next part is stage two labour, this is quite a, an explosive part of, of the procedure where the mare is actually really quite violently pushing out the foal with strong abdominal contractions and this would normally last anywhere between 5 and 25 minutes but on the average it would be about 15 minutes and, and I talk about the 15 minute rule meaning if nothing's happened within 15 minutes really there's more than likely something going to be wrong and, and the mare would need help. So we've got, you can see the mare's pushing quite strongly here, her legs are moving up and down and, and we've got this, this small sort of bag of fluid called the amnion, that's a, a, a sort of bluey white bag that comes out and you can see the foal's hooves are coming out as well. This foal was actually upside down and, and that, that was obviously quite a problem. This is an abnormal position where the, normally, the, as I said earlier, the, the foal's head should be near the tail and the, both the front feet should be near the, the, the mare's hocks and, and actually you can see this was actually slightly twisted. Um, if you notice, I'm, I'm just putting ropes on there just to help me get some traction on, um, although it's, obviously it's, you've got to be quite careful how you do that. And one of the things I'm doing now is, is pulling them, and, and if you notice, I'm pulling the legs alternatively, meaning that it, it just narrows the, the width of the shoulders and, and can often uh, narrow the width of the, the hips as well, and, and uh, I'm twisting that as well to prevent this what's called hip lock, where the, the hips of the foal get stuck inside the mare. It's at this point really, the, the mare will commonly fall on its own, but I, I always feel that I have to give a little bit of extra help. And, and at this point, you can see the, the foal's tongue going a, a, a funny purpley colour, and I always think I'd, I'd like to get them out as soon as possible. Because of my concern about how quickly to get them out, I had to get uh, the member of staff doing the filming to help me at this point. So this is straight after the birth, the foal's lying with the back feet still inside the mare and the placenta is still attached via the umbilical cord to the foal. Um, at this point I'm just checking that the foal can actually breathe, Obviously, he's got his head up, um, he is a colt, and he's got his head up and the mare's now starting to take interest. And this, this is a good time to try and, and give them time together, allow the transfer of blood from the placenta to the foal. Um, it was quite a cold night uh, 
uh, this falling. So this is the reason that I decided to give the fall a bit of a rub and try and get some of the wet off because at this point he, he was actually shaking a little bit. Um, but it, if it is a, a warm night and there are no problems and the foal's breathing okay, it's often a good idea just to leave them and, and give them time to, to bond together. And, and that is a really important part of it. At this point as well, we're concerned about the placenta and that, that is hanging out the back end and normally that would take up to about three hours to get rid of. In fact, anything longer than three hours is regarded as a retained placenta, which can happen in some mares, up to about 10% sometimes can, can hold on to them. Often related to bad foldings, although this wasn't a particularly bad one, even though she needed a bit of help or if there's any problems with, with the mare or the foal, that, that can sometimes cause a problem. So I, I can be seen here tying the, the placenta up and just with a piece of baling twine. This is to act as a counterweight to try and make sure that, um, that the, the mare doesn't stand on the placenta and, and tear it and, and rip it out or, or rip it out of the uterus prematurely, which could leave a, a fragment behind and, and that can be you know, quite problematical. So it's quite simple, nothing special about this really apart from just getting bits of baler twine and tying it up in a lump so that it's not trailing on the floor. Uh, you can see there's bits of fluid still in there, bits of blood, but the mare isn't bleeding uh, particularly badly. Obviously this is an area you, you need to be quite careful if the mare is still a little bit sore and um, she may kick out so it, it's often careful, you've, you've got to be careful at this point, um, but most mares are, are more interested in the foal and, and generally as long as they're standing still you don't have too much of a problem. So the mare will normally lick the foal and try and stimulate the foal, uh, also remove a lot of the moisture from the coat. As we said we already had dried the foal quite substantially with with the night being quite cold uh, but again this is an important part of it and normally the foal would start to develop a suck reflex within about five minutes and normally be able to make attempts to stand anyway within about 30 minutes and be capable of standing within a couple of hours um, without any help and, and this is quite an important part to get the foal up and moving and the next bit is the dipping the navel, which is important to do quite early to make sure you don't get any infection getting in through the, the umbilical cord stump. So the, the foal sucking is a vital part of, of the foal's initial development in the first few hours and it's very, very important from the point of view that the, the foal must get the maternal immunity in, in the first milk or colostrum. That's got all the antibodies that will provide the foal's immunity for the first five to six months of, of life. And it's very important that they do get on. Normally they would start sucking within about six hours. And it's important that you check that they are sucking properly, that they've actually got the mouth on the teat and they're sucking milk rather than just sucking on the leg or sucking on the, the udder in, in some other area. But as I say, it, it passes the, the mare's immunity in the form of immunoglobulin G directly into the foal's gut and then it's absorbed up to about 6 to 12 hours directly into the foal's bloodstream. Longer than this time, particularly longer than 12 hours, they, they cannot absorb it quite as well and, and that is when it becomes a problem. The foal will not get enough immunity um, and it then may end up with getting infections. They normally need a minimum of 8 grams per litre of, of immunoglobulin G in the bloodstream. One of the most important things about foaling is to make sure that the mares got rid of the afterbirth in enough time. Normally we would say around about six hours we start to get concerned. In fact most mares will have already got rid of the afterbirth well before that, often within a, an hour or two. So if, if they've not passed it by six hours we often have to give them a hand and remove it and it's very very important whether you remove it or not, at, at some point you check that afterbirth and make sure that you've got everything with it because there are problems if, if some of the afterbirth is left behind you can get a, a very severe toxemia which generally can make the mare very sick and, and can even cause things like laminitis and, and can be very very serious particularly in heavier mares, draft mares uh, that are particularly prone to it. So we'll just go through now looking at the afterbirth and uh, looking at the, the layout and, and the, the way it's arranged and, and in, in particular the important parts of it. So the, the afterbirth, I suppose quite obviously, is the shape of, of a mare's uterus. So you've got this long body starting here at the what's called the hilus, which is the, the area where it attaches to the cervix. And then going up the body of, of the, the 
uh, uterus and in this case the afterbirth. Then we've got this horn here which is a, a lot smaller horn, this is the non-pregnant horn. And then this is the lot larger horn which is the pregnant horn which is obviously the, the part that the, the foal will actually lie in. And then attached to that you've got the amnion, Th this part is called the allantocorion. This is the amnion, this is what the foal is actually delivered inside of um, and, and it's the thing that, that we would open first of all. So, looking at this, what are the, the main areas? Well, it's the ends of these horns that are the main problem. This is where the, um, the end, the blind ending sac ends and, and these are the critical areas, particularly the non-pregnant horn, but even the pregnant horn. Um, as you can see, it's a blind ending sac. Um, it's like a sock almost and, and it, that must be intact. If any of that is lost and these are the areas that may be left behind when the mare cleanses, when the mare gets rid of the afterbirth. And so if those are left behind and they lead to a, um, a, a piece remaining in there, it will very quickly putrefy and then, as I said, the mare can become toxemic. So if we're examining, sometimes you, you may see these, these sort of quite odd things that may occur. These are, these are what are called hippomanes. These are just an accumulation of, of tissue that's in there from, from the amniotic fluid. Uh, and these are often found with the foal. These, these are regarded as a fertility thing, but it's certainly nothing unusual to worry about if you do find these types of things. It's not, it's not the foal's liver or anything, which is certainly what's been mentioned in the past. But going out in a field is an important time for a foal's development to make sure that they develop the strength in the muscles, the bones, the tendons, the ligaments. And box resting a foal for prolonged periods of time is is often not advantageous unless there is an underlying orthopaedic problem that necessitates that. Fencing is very important as well and barbed wire or electric fencing should never be used in this situation in case the foal runs through it, which it may well do with not being used to being in the field. We hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, obviously mother and baby doing well at the moment, uh, there's still a long way to go and there's uh, a lot of trials and tribulations I'm sure. but. Um, Certainly we're delighted with what we've got, uh, nice little colt, he's becoming a little bit cheeky now, he's a couple of weeks old. Um, if you do need any more information, our website is www.equine-vets.com and there you'll find more detail about other things to watch out for, things like urination we've not mentioned, what to use in the umbilical cord dip, um, but yeah, we're, we're happy with him um, and we're certainly going to enjoy him, so we hope you enjoy your horses too.